Hey guys, welcome to uh, Math 8. We are doing uh, the next section, which is Chapter 3, Section 4 here. Let me tell you where we stand. Uh, we started Chapter 3 by doing one-step equations. Might have been something that looked like uh, 2x equals 6. Really easy to solve, right? One step because there's one number to get rid of. From there, we progress to uh, two-step equations like 2x plus 3 equals 11, where there are now two numbers to get rid of, right? First, you get rid of the 3, then you get rid of the 2, easy as can be. Finally, in the last section, we stayed with two-step equations, but we looked at ones that needed simplified first, like 2 times x plus 3 equals 15, which uh, the first thing I would do is simplify this side into 2x plus 6. And then I have a two-step equation that I can solve, right? So today we take the next step forward, and the next step forward looks like this. It is when we have variables on both sides of the equation. And we'll get through this, and, uh, and you'll be ready. So the learning target today is that you can solve equations that have a variable on both sides and those that need simplified first. Of course, we've already done ones that need simplified first, so nothing new there. All right, so first here says, after you simplify the expression on each side, remember this is always the first thing you do, is if you can simplify the problem, you go ahead and simplify it. After you simplify the expression on each side of the problem, the most you can have left over is two terms on each side. You might have a variable term on each side, and you might have a constant, oops, constant term on each side, right? You might have something like a 2x and a 3 on one side of the equal sign. And on the other side, maybe you have a 4x and a 11, whatever, right? But the most you can have is two terms on each side, a variable term on each side and a constant term on each side, once you get the problem simplified. All right, so today we are finally looking at really the last step. I have shown you these same three steps on how to solve an equation, every page of notes so far, and this is the last thing we're doing. What do you do when there's a variable term on both sides? So if there is a variable term on both sides, you need to eliminate one of them by adding or subtracting to cancel one of them out. And I gave you two examples here. So in this first example, I have a 5x on one side and I have a 3x on the other. And my job is to cancel one of them out. I would probably cancel out the 3x. And I do this by, right, by adding or subtracting just to make it cancel out or make it zero. So if I wanted to cancel out the 3x, I would subtract 3x and it'll cancel out. But if I'm going to subtract 3x on the right side, then of course I also need to subtract 3x on the left side so that everything stays equal. So I draw my line and I bring down my results. Over here I would still have 2x and plus 7. And over here I would just have 11. And as you can see now, I'm down to a two-step equation, which you guys all know how to solve, and I'm not going to finish. Uh, this other example, I have a negative 7x on one side and a 5x on the other. Now, I would get rid of the 7x 
so that I uh, my variable was on one side and my 24 was on the other. So to get rid of a minus 7x, this time I'm going to, right, I'm going to add to cancel it out. I'm going to add 7x and that will make it zero. Of course, if I'm going to add 7x on the left, then I need to add 7x on the right also. I draw my line and I bring down my results. On the left, I just have 24. On the right, I have 12x. And in that problem, now I'm down to a one-step equation. And we all know how to solve a one-step equation, right? So the only new thing today is, well, the only new thing at first here, I'm going to go over a story problem in a minute, uh, is when there's a variable on both sides, how do you cancel one of them out? Because you're not allowed to have a variable on both sides if you want to get the variable by itself. All right. We're on the back. Let's look, or we're at the bottom, I guess. Let's look at a, uh, it's really just one example, except I'm going to do it twice just to prove something to you. So I have this 13x, or 13 plus 4x equals 7x minus 5. And you can see here, but I have the same example here that I do here. And I'm going to do it twice just to prove something to you. So in this first example, it says to eliminate the 4x. All right, so since there's a variable on both sides, I'm going to eliminate one of them. I'm eliminating the 4x. I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to bring down my results on both sides. Over here, just 13. On the right side, I have 7x minus 4x is 3x, and I still have this minus 5 to bring down. Now I can solve this thing, right? First up, I might add 5 to both sides to get rid of the 5. I will draw my line, and I will bring down my results. That'll be 18 and 3x. And finally, to get rid of the 3, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to bring down my results. And I have x equals 6. So let me go to the second equation. Same equation, but this time it says to get rid of the 7x. So this time when I start the problem, instead of getting rid of the 4x, I'm going to get rid of the 7x by subtracting 7x on both sides. I draw my line and I bring down my results, right? The 13 comes down, the positive 4x and the minus 7x would be minus 3x. And on the other side of the equal sign, I just have the negative 5. A lot of people forget the negative. Don't forget when there's a minus in front of a number, you got to bring it down with the number. And now I can get rid of uh, the 13 and the 3 so that the x can be by itself. First, I will get rid of the 13 by subtracting 13 from both sides. And I will draw my line and bring down my results. On the left side, I have negative 3x. And on the right side, negative 5 and negative 13 makes negative 18. And then finally, I would get rid of the negative 3 by dividing by negative 3. And I would draw my line and bring down my results. On the left side, I now just have x. And on the right side, negative 18 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive 6. And you can see here, I got the same answer either way. And my point is, as I kind of wrote down here in the paragraph, it does not matter which term I get rid of. When there's a variable on both sides, you just need to eliminate one of them. Most teachers would tell you to get rid of the smaller one. You'll tend to make less mistakes. But it doesn't matter which one you get rid of. You get the same answer either way. I thought I would do the balance statement just for the heck of it. So I'm going to put the 6 in both spots for the x. And I'm going to have 13 plus 4 times 6. 
and that's going to be 7 times 6 plus 5, right? That is what my balance statement would look like. Let me figure out if the two sides are equal. So on the left over here, I would multiply first, giving me 13 plus 24. Then I would add the 13 and the 24 and get 37. Uh-oh. Oh, I see a mistake I made. That would have been costly. I forgot it was a minus sign, not a plus sign here. Right here, I should have been putting a minus sign in over here. Maybe you caught that before I did. And on the right side, I would multiply first and get 42 minus 5. And 42 minus 5 is also 37. So my balance statement is 37 equals 37. And since it's equal, it, it means I have the right answer. Um, I gave you a couple problems to practice here. We might do one of them. Uh, the first thing I want to, yeah, we're just going to do one. So let's just skip this one. Uh, I want to point out, look, you now know how to solve any equation, no matter how complex. All you got to do is follow these three steps. First, check to see if the expression on each side can be simplified. Second, if there is a variable term on both sides, eliminate one of them. And then last, get the variable by itself and you're good to go. See if you can get the same answer here that I get. So I am going to, this needs simplified first. So I'm going to distribute the three. Three times two X is six X and three times four is 12. And I'm done simplifying that side. On the right, I'm going to distribute the negative two. Negative two times X is negative two X. And negative two times negative 14 is positive 28. That's a terrible eight, but so be it. All right, now that I have simplified it, step one is done. Step two is, is there a variable on both sides? There is. I am going to get rid of the negative 2x by adding 2x to both sides. And I'm going to cancel it out, and I'm going to bring down my results. I would have 8x plus 12, and over here I just have the 28. Step 2 is done. And now I am ready to get the variable by itself. It's just a two-step equation now with two numbers to get rid of. First, I would subtract 12 from both sides, and that would cancel out the 12, and I'm going to bring down my results. I have 8x and I have 16. And finally, I'm going to get rid of the 8 by dividing by 8, and I'm going to draw a line and bring down my results, and I got x equals 2, All right? All right, last thing of the day right here. This is going to be a story problem that leads to a variable on both sides. It says, you are choosing between two health clubs. Lifetime Fitness offers membership for a fee of $99 plus a monthly fee of $24. Planet Fitness offers membership for a fee of $50 plus a monthly fee of $31. After how many months will the total cost of joining each club be the same? All right. So there's something I have not talked about in class yet, but it is uh, how to determine what your variable should represent, right? We have to say what our variable should represent. And I have this rule I call the 99% rule. Maybe it's more like 95%, but so be it. And that is, whatever the question wants you to figure out, that is typically what you have your variable represent. In this question, they want me to figure out how many months it'll be until the cost is equal for these two clubs. So I have my variable represent, oops, equal number of months. And I need to set up now a couple equa or an equation. 
I need to set up an equation where x equals the number of months. You might remember from the chapter one test, we set up the uh, expressions like this for renting a, I believe like a chainsaw or a, there's a power washer and a wood chipper from Lowe's and Home Depot. Similar thing here, we are going to represent the cost using a mathematical expression for joining each health club. What we actually want to know is uh, how much does lifetime fitness cost and how much does planet or yeah, and how much does planet fitness cost? And we want those amounts to be equal to each other. We want to know when will lifetime equal planet fitness? And I'm going to represent each of them with a mathematical expression where X is the number of months. I can represent their cost with an expression. Let's look at lifetime fitness. They charge a fee of $99 plus a monthly fee of 24 bucks. So how much do I pay to join lifetime? Well, I pay $99 plus $24 per month, which is where my X comes in. $99 plus $24 each month. So this expression, 99 plus 24X, would represent my cost, my total cost joining lifetime month after month after month. On the other hand, Planet Fitness, they have a fee of $50 plus a monthly fee of 31. So they start me with a one-time charge of $50 plus they charge me $31 per month, right? That 31X means 31 per month. And I want to know when these two amounts are going to be equal, right? So I'm setting, I'm setting the two expressions equal to each other. And when I solve for X, I will know the X value or the number of months when these two amounts equal each other. And uh, I'm going to go through that quickly, I guess. So I would subtract 24x probably if I was doing this from both sides, giving me 99 equals 50 plus 7x. Now I have a two-step equation, which you're all good at solving. I would subtract 50 from both sides giving me 49 equals 7x. And finally, I would divide by 7, giving me x equals 7. So the question here was, after how many months will the cost of joining each club be equal? Well, the two amounts are equal when x is 7, and x is the number of months. So after 7 months, the two amounts will be equal. And I write a therefore statement with my little triangle of dots, which means therefore. Therefore, after seven months, their costs will be equal. A nice sentence for your therefore statement where you, uh, you basically say, because all this work is true, Therefore, this is the answer. All right, you can start your assignment. Good luck. Hope it goes well.